Hello to everyone. I really wish I could be in Cape Town right now. But thank you very much for allowing me to be, there, to be there in this virtual way. My talk is going to be about how is it possible to convince policymakers to use evidence in a systematic way. I think one of the nicest goals we have in science we have as evaluators is that our evidence, our evaluations could be used by policymakers all the time. Sometimes, however, this is not possible. Let me tell you that a week ago, exactly, the 8th of September, the Ministry of Finance in Mexico addressed Congress and their budget suggestion was one in which they were using evaluations to shape that budget. I can tell you now that the Mexican government and almost all government states are working to reduce poverty using evaluations. And they do that every year over the past five years. How is it possible that every year the budget is done using the evaluation of almost 150 social programs? So this is happening every year in Mexico. How is it possible that we can do that? So let me tell you this short story. In the year 2006, Congress, through a social development law, created an independent institution, it's called CONEVAL, the National Council for the Evolution of Social Policies, with two objectives. A, to evaluate all programs, all social programs and all social strategies of government and state governors, and B, the second object of Carnival is to measure poverty of the na at the national, state, and municipality level. Not only that, but as you, as you can see, this poverty measurement is using seven dimensions. Within the poverty measurement, we have household income, we have education gap, we have the lack of access to health services, the lack of access to social security, the lack of access to, quality, to, to, a, to a house with quality, and the lack of access of having services in housing, and as well, the lack of access to food. We have seven elements. One is income, and the other six is about social rights. So over the past almost eight years, Carnival has been working on those two elements, producing evidence, producing impact evaluations and design evaluations and process evaluations of almost 150 programs every year, different types of evaluation, and also at the same time we've been measuring poverty at a national, state, and municipality level. At the very beginning, we thought it's going to be very simple to convince policymakers to use evidence. It was not that simple until something interesting happened. So we started to produce, produce evidence, both in terms of evaluations and also in terms of poverty indicators. But as you know, as we all know, there is always a struggle 
to convince policymakers, to convince politicians to use our scientific evidence. This is not that easy. Sometimes we are a bit naive in thinking that all policymakers, all politicians, are going to listen to us carefully. And everything, everything we're going to say, in terms of science, in terms of evidence, is going to be used immediately by, by policymakers. It is not that way, unfortunately. Unless we have a bridge. Unless we have a bridge between the evidence we produce and their political incentives. We understood quite well over the past five to six years that a poverty indicator is a very sens sensible political indicator. A poverty indicator is very sensitive for the media. And therefore, policymakers, politicians, are not happy when poverty goes up either in the country or in the states. We understand that policymakers have political incentives. They want to be perhaps presidents in the future. They want their political party to win in the next election. And therefore, they don't like poverty to go up. They don't want poverty to increase. And therefore, what is happening is that we are linking our evidence to those political incentives and over the past five to six years we have governors, we have ministers and we have even the president worried about poverty and they understand that they, can, they cannot reduce poverty through tampering poverty figures. The only way they can reduce poverty is through public policy. And therefore, the next question they have, if they want to reduce poverty, even for political incentives, the next question is, can you tell us which evidence you have in terms of programs to reduce poverty through their impact? Therefore, what they want to know is, what is the evolution telling us in terms of programs? Which program is the best one to reduce the deprivation of housing? Which one is the program or the programs which are the best to reduce the educational gap? Which programs are the best ones to reduce poverty in general? And therefore, what we have over the past five to six years is that we keep having questions from policymakers in terms of evaluations and evidence in terms of programs. For this reason, the federal government and also the state governors designed a national strategy for inclusion. This strategy is about organizing ministers, organizing offices, organizing governments, in terms of their different goals to reduce poverty. So, for instance, it is quite an important goal for the Ministry of Education. They know that if they place a child in school, they have a reduction on the educational gap and therefore they have a reduction in poverty. If, for instance, the Ministry of Health, they increase the access to health services, they have a reduction in health deprivation, and they have a reduction in poverty. And therefore, this national strategy for inclusion, they have different goals in different ministries, they have the same goals for the state governors, and therefore, the government is using this specific way of measuring poverty to organize a quite logical strategy to reduce poverty, which includes trying to know which programs 
which social tools, which policy make, which policy uh, is the best one to reduce poverty in different dimensions. What happened over the past two years, finally, is that poverty went down between 2014 and 2016 when this national strategy for inclusion was at the, at the highest with the most important element of coordination. So despite of increasing poverty between 2010 and 2014 due to, the, to economic problems, with the help of this strategy, with the help of evidence, the government was able to prioritize the best programs in order to reduce poverty. Not only that, this strategy included as well trying to convince the central bank to reduce inflation even more and to increase employment through the Ministry of, of Economy. And therefore, between 2014 and 16, we have this important virtuous cir circle. Reduce poverty, both in terms of the economic uh, process and evolution in Mexico and public policy. So, in this way, it's been quite interesting that both the element of poverty measurement and the valuations together were able to be used in a systematic way by policymakers. So, as a summary, our Mexican constitution said that a very important element for Mexico is to address social rights. Then, Congress developed a policy indicator using social rights and income, and Congress as well created an independent body to measure poverty. We've been measuring poverty at a national, state, and municipality level, and politicians understand that poverty indicator is very important in terms of their political incentives. No one likes poverty to go up in the, in the country or in the states. And therefore, the government created a better coordination policy to reduce poverty. So, over the past five years, we have this element in which evidence has been used in a very systematic way by policymakers. So what is happening right now is that policymakers in general, they are using the evidence we produce both in terms of evaluations and in terms of poverty indicators. Did we think this was going to happen? I don't think so. We really thought 10 years ago that we're going to struggle more in terms of convincing policymakers to listen and then to use evidence. We thought we're going to knock too many doors and present ourselves as well-trained scientists and academics which are producing evidence to be used by policymakers. We didn't think that both the Ministry of Finance, the federal one, or the governors should be asking for evidence every year. And I think the magic which we didn't expect, was that a poverty indicator is a very powerful indicator in terms of political incentives. So every time we want politicians to pay attention to evidence, I believe that we have to discover how can we convince them through linking our evidence to their political incentives. 
And we have to apply that to many other fields. For instance, at the end of the day, development is bigger than only poverty. In the case of Mexico, we really want to convince policymakers to increase effective access to social rights, not only to follow a very basic poverty indicator, because our indicator is measuring only the very basic elements of our seven dimensions. How can we convince policymakers? How can we produce a bigger and more powerful indicator than a poverty indicator, which is political sensitive. If we manage to do that, then in the long run, the development in Mexico will grow faster. Our challenge, and I think the challenge in this table is, are we able to produce evidence for which policymakers uh, pay attention? How can we produce evidence thinking in the way politicians think? Thank you very much.